ഹുദാഹ <laughs> ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the quran and the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to understand them to accept them in the hearts and to implement them in our life amen to mami from today inshallah we will be starting the tafsir of the quran and it will have certain system which we have to follow all the time number 1 we will be first of all all the notes that we will be having we will go through it at the beginning after that i will give you the summary of what we have covered and then the main point that we have to discuss with each other to understand whatever we have covered normally normally according to imam ibn kathir rahmatullahi alayh the tafsir should be the learning of the quran has got six steps there are six ways six steps are there to learn the complete understanding or to understand the quran completely Number 1 is that a person should know how to read it in Arabic. Each and every verse he should know how to read it in Arabic. Number 2, he should know the word meaning of it. If you are reading Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin then you should know the meaning of the word Alhamdu then Lillahi then Rabb and Alamin like that. This is the second step the third step is that you should know the translation word with phrase translation which means like like normally you say all praises be to allah the lord of the universe now you are not translating word to word but you are translating as a phrase translation this is the third step the fourth step is after you have learned the reading word meaning and the phrase translation then you should learn its historical background of it every surah or every portion of the quran could be complete one surah could be seven verses could be six verses could be two verses could be only one verse but it has got a subject within itself so that particular verse or verses have got a historical background why this Uh, verses were revealed for an example if allah speaks about the permiss- permissible issues related to the night in the month of ramadan that a person can have sexual intercourse with his wife person can eat and drink uh, after the sunset all those issues related to that there are certain indications in the quran about it but what that has to do with us that will teach us if we know the historical background of it which means that means such certain some incidents have taken place at that time amongst the sahaba and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed those verses to clarify or to you know uh, answer their questions or to clarify the incident that happened so this is called historical background in arabic we call shan al nuzul shan al nuzul ki kis purpose ke liye yo tri hai so this is the fourth step and which is very very important for everyone to know otherwise you will hear any speaker giving the quotation of the quran and he will read the translation of it and he will uh, interpret the way he wants it 
But for us as Muslims to know the Quran properly, even to even sometimes to convince the Orientalists, those Christians, those non-Muslims who are studying the Quran and the meaning and interpretation and the tafsir of the Quran, they have lots of lots of question marks. And they will quote those verses to us and they will say, clarify this. And most of you have seen Dr. Zakir's programs where the Orientalist, they are focusing on what? The verses related to the jihad. All those verses related to jihad, they say, look, this is harsh religion. Islam says that you find wherever you find the non-Muslim, kill them. But if you don't know the historical background, then you yourself will think, yes, the verse is very clear. That wherever you find them, chop the heads. This, these are the verses in the Quran, but these are only portion of the, even not complete verse, it's only two words in one complete verse. The answer is maybe the verse above it, or maybe the verse next to it. But we don't know the historical background, then we will be confused. And this is how most of these Muslim scholars also, who have their own understanding and philosophy of, you know, uh, like we say, apna apna falsafa. So they use those verses the way they understand it. But for us to understand this, we should know the historical background. Like these two, particularly these two surahs which you are going to learn. There are people, they say these, these two surahs are not from the Quran. These are only duas. Like normal dua when you eat, you say Bismillah. Normal dua when you finish your food, you say Alhamdulillah. So this, these two surahs are revealed by Allah, but in the form of dua. It's not the portion of the Quran. There are people, they say, they even deny the verse, the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, where it says that Rasulullah sallam he was affected with the black magic. And seriously, he was seriously affected with the black magic. People have rejected that. That how, how, can we, how can we accept that the messenger of Allah, who is a messenger for the whole universe, can be affected with the black magic? So how can we accept that? So they have rejected the hadith from Sahih Bukhari. So we have to know the reading of Arabic, because then you know that where Abdul Majid is reading and what is it, where he is twisting. One simple word, innama, indeed, yaqeenan, surely. If you break it, inna ma, indeed, no. And you find the people, they say, in one place Allah is saying, innama ana basharum mithlukum, I am. Indeed, I am a human being, same like you. The other Mulvi Sahib, who believes that Rasul is not a Bashar, he will say, Inna ma ana basharum mithlukum. Indeed, I am not human like you. See, the word inna ma is one word, and if you break it, it becomes inna ma. Indeed, I am not. So that way, we have to know the Arabic, its word meaning, its verbal mean, uh, phrase meaning, and also we should know its historical background. This is for a student who is a quality student. Because most of us, like Khalid Bhai was worried when we first came here, he found only few people here, so he thought that we have to start with this number. So my principle of teaching is not the quantity, it's the quality. I always prefer to teach people, those who are people of quality, not the number. I don't go for the number, I go for the quality. So Alhamdulillah, even if this is the number I have, my students, and if they are quality students, Alhamdulillah, I don't mind traveling from any distance to teach them. Even one person, if he is a man of quality, I don't mind traveling for him. So these steps which I told you, these are the steps for the quality students. Some of the people may just come, attend, and they listen to it, they understand, and they take something that could be easy for them to understand or practice. So they are also quality students, because Abdullah bin Abbas has said the, people, the human beings are of two, four kinds. 
one is the one who teaches the people the students are of four qualities one is the one who teaches he is also a man of quality one who learns from him he is a man of quality the third one is who is listening to him and the fourth he says he is like a donkey with four legs he is not teaching he is not learning he is not even listening so what he advised he advised that be one of the three the first three but don't be the fourth one so alhamdulillah uh, those people who even attend and they listen to it, it they are also quality people according to abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu the fifth step is the fifth one comes fadail merits and virtues if you are learning any particular portion of the quran and there are some merits and virtues mentioned by rasulullah sallam like for example when we are learning surah al falaq and surah an nas the merits and virtues of surah al falaq and surah an nas is that if you read them if you are affected with the black magic it will cure you if you are affected with the evil eye it will cure you if you are affected with the position of the jinn it will cure you so these are called merits and virtues these are the fifth step when you learn and the sixth one is how to implement in your life if you don't practice the quran what you are learning then this book is only a book but quran has not come for that purpose Quran when inshallah when we'll continue with this and you people will allow me to come again for the leg course inshallah then you will learn the Quran is not for the people jo mar chuke hain un pe khatam kara karate is not for the dead people but alive in Mecca Allah has revealed so many verses in the Quran that O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah is saying giving him you know like condolence or tasalli we call it that giving him peace of mind that don't worry about these people they listen to you and they turn their backs to you and they go away they are worse than the dead people because you cannot make the this is what Allah says in the Quran Allah says you cannot make the dead hear you in al mauta la yasma'un the dead will never listen to you so referring to what those who are alive and still they don't pour, you know they don't show the heed to the quran allah says they are as good as dead referring to what that quran is not revealed for the dead quran is revealed for those who are alive so quran is a life book which is for us the sixth step is that every muslim should know what message he is getting for himself otherwise on the day of judgment not only that in sahih muslim rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said inna allah yarfa'u bi hadha alkitab aqwaman wa yad'u bihi akhirin now this is a very very important hadith with regards to the learning of the quran and implementing it what message that you get if you don't implement it then this is the result in allah yarfa'u bi hadha alkitab aqwaman allah raises the nations allah blesses them with the dignity honor prosperity victory through this book and allah degrade them humiliate them and destroy them through this book and the scholars have made it very clear referring to what if you hold allah's book in your hand in your life in your day to day life allah will bless you with the victory respect honor dignity and if you keep this book away from you then you will be humiliated this is in the dunya when you go to the grave when the munkar nakir will come and people will be asked questions if they are not able to give the answer then the the torment the punishment the adab will start from the grave itself but if you were reading the quran you were implementing the quran in your life rasul sallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that in the grave the quran will come in the human form personification in the human form and he will intercede and try to protect you from the punishment of the grave not only that 
د قران سر او نوٹس بھی لے لیں د قران ول پروٹیکٹ یو آن دا ڈے آف ججمنٹ وین دے ڈے آف ریزرکشن وین دا پیپل ول بی آس ٹو گیٹ اپ فرام دا گریوز دیر ول بی اے ہینڈ سم مین اسٹینڈنگ ان فرنٹ آف ہیم اینڈ ہی ول بی یو نو پولنگ اسٹریچنگ از ہینڈس ٹو پول آؤٹ دا مین فرام دا گریو and the man will look at this person he will say yaar itna khoobsurat naujawan ye kaun hai who is this handsome person and why is he helping me to get up from my grave and then he will say i am your friend i am quran the one that make you wake up at night did not let you sleep and i am the one who stopped you from this haram i am the one who i stopped you i guided you in this the quran will come in the human form and hadith says that he will hold allah's arsh and intercede on your behalf till he makes allah so agreeable or happy that allah will say bhai jao ya le jao isko chhod de maaf kar diya maine take him with you i have forgiven him this is quran if you implement the quran in your life not only that today when people have cases in the court sometimes when you have a strong evidence and witness you you win the case yes or no yes or no it helps in your case on the day of judgment on the right side all the prophets and messengers of allah right from adam till isa alaihi salam they will be in one side of the allah's court and on the left side all his their nations will be on the left side of the allah's court and they will be denying that we don't know them they will reject them that we don't know Musa, Isa, Harun, Yahya, Zakaria. We don't know who are they. We never ever got the message from them. And the messengers and prophets will say, Allah, you made us Rasul and messengers and prophets. You sent us to Qawm-e Hud, Qawm-e Aad. We went to them, we conveyed the message. So Allah will ask the messengers, who are your witnesses? <clears throat> they will say, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's ummah is our witness. They will say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki ummat hamari gawahi dengi. We will be brought to Allah subhanahu wa taala in front of Allah, and we will be asked, "Do you know them?" We will say yes. Musa went to Bani Israel. Isa alaihi wasallam came to Bani Israel, and then uh, Nasara. We will say Hud alaihi wasallam was sent to people of Ad. Salih alayhi salam was sent to people of Samud and then finally we will be asked how did you know tum to maujood nahi the alam ul ghaib to nahi the har jagah hazir nazir nahi the how did you know that these prophets were sent to their people we will say allah we read your quran we will say allah we read your quran and your quran your quran you have said that in our sallana nuhan ila qaumihi we have sent nu to his people this is how the quran is the witness for us and this is how you will be saved in this dunya and saved in the akhirah saved in the grave saved on the day of judgment and also you will be main source even to witness the truth of the prophets and messengers So that is the reason. These are the six steps that we should learn the Quran. Number one, we should learn the Quran how to read it in Arabic. Number two, we should learn it in word meaning. <clears throat> Number three, we should know the phrase meaning of the Quran. Number four, we should know the historical background, shan al nuzul, asbab al nuzul, purpose of its revelation. Number five, merits and virtues if there are any. And number six. what is the message to you and to me that we have to implement in our life sahaba ikram the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to take 10 verses and they would follow all these six steps in it and once they have implemented it they would go to another 10 verses and this is how they have memorized the quran and they lived by quran and they died by quran and then we can see that two third of world was conquered during the time of umar ibn al khattab radhiyallahu an based on the quran two third of the world and that is only because of the quran not because of the sword alhamdulillah so this is the beginning and alhamdulillah 
I hope that you will convey this message to your friends and brothers and sisters and your children so that they can benefit with this. And remember that if you bring one person to attend this, if he learns anything from this class and if he pass it on to his generations, on the Day of Judgment when you will come, Allah will give you equal reward of what he got without reducing anything of his reward. You have done good things, that's different thing. But you, through you, if you have guided anybody else and anybody else has benefited through you, you'll get the equal reward without having deduction from his reward. So Alhamdulillah, that is the way you can invite the people, Alhamdulillah. You might be having so many good friends. MashaAllah, kabhi tikka khane chale ja rahe, kabhi nahari khane ja rahe. Alhamdulillah. So if you can invite them for that, you can invite them for this, and then they bol na chalo baad mein khalenge yar. Pehle dars mein jaate hain. Let's go. So this is how you get the double benefit of that. So, so first step is that we will read the Quran. I will read all these verses. I will read all these verses, and you have to repeat after me. And then, inshallah, we'll read the translation. Then we'll read the notes. And then I will explain to you certain things which are related to the surah for our current life, inshallah. Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq Min sharri ma khalaq Wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab Wa min sharri naffatati fil uqad Wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. Okay, since our time is limited and this is our beginning, inshallah, next time in future when we will have and you have enough time, then we can prolong our classes, which means that uh, any word that has to be pronounced correctly, any uh, any improvement is required for Arabic accent or any particular uh, indication for the tajweed rule is needed that we can do later on but uh, now you have the translation and next time please this is because we are learning in a classical way and it is very very important if you complete one juice with me which is the last juice inshallah believe me you will be able to translate another 29 Jews by yourself. That's why I said I look for the quality people. Which means when I teach you these words, each word like Qul. Qul may be repeated in the Quran maybe 200 times. So if you know the meaning of the word Qul here now, that means those 200 repetitions you have done it. Totally, Quran has got thousand words used in different contexts with different extracts. So if you know those thousand words of the whole Quran, you know the whole Quran. And 50% of that, like you can say 500 words are already there in Jews Amma, the 30th Jews. So next time, please, if you want, inshallah, bring the notebook with you and pencil so that each and every word will be there. I can give you that myself, but it will be too spoon feeding. I can make the notes, I can give you qul, say, I seek refuge. 
I can say that, I can make it, I can break it and I can give it to you, but then it will be, will be two spoon feeding. But if you are interested, then the second step is that you should know the word meaning of each and every verse. So that, that you have to do additionally. Now let's go to the Quran at the translation and then we go to the notes inshallah. The rule in Islam, Allah has said in the Quran in different places that وَإِذَا قَرَاتِ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Whenever you read the Quran, you should say, Allah, I seek refuge with you from the set and the cursed. This is the first rule that when you start reading the Quran for the first time, you should say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ and with regards to Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, it's only with Awudu, it's only needed when you start the beginning, the, uh, when you start the surah from the beginning. But when you start the surah from the mid of it, like if you are just reading Ayatul Kursi, Ayatul Kursi is 255 verse of the Quran. So if you are starting from Ayatul Kursi, then it is only A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. You don't have to add Bismillah. But if you add it, no problem. But it's not needed. But definitely when you begin the Surah, new Surah, Alhamdulillah, yes, you have to say A'udhu and then Bismillah completely. When you're reading Surah Al-Nas, you should say A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Am I clear? Okay. So. Since we are starting the surah, so we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. A'udhu means I seek refuge. Billahi, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, mean from a shaitan, shaitan, the Satan. Rajeem means the one who is rejected. In Urdu we say, Dhutkar diya gaya, Nikal diya gaya. Like that, the cursed one, the one who is rejected. Why we say that? Because Quran knows, the shaitan knows that if you read the Quran with understanding, you will be guided. So shaitan will definitely come and he will whisper in your mind, he won't let you understand. So that is the reason when the very beginning of learning the Quran, you ask Allah's protection. Only Allah's protection will make you understand the Quran and will keep you away from the misunderstanding, misguidance of the shaitan. Remember that. Sometimes people are saying, you know, Maulana Sahib, I have a very poor memory. My memory is very weak, so Maulvi Sahib will give you a taviz. Taviz will not sharpen your memory. No. Taviz will not give you, you know, sharp memory. There are certain things that are, you know, defective in your own system, mental system, brain system, that you have to cure, and that is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Allah, I teri panha me aana chata hoon shaitan mardud se. Allah, I want to take your protection against the Satan, the cursed one. So once you ask Allah's protection, Alhamdulillah, shaitan can't do anything. And there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallam, it says that when you are afflicted with any minor problem, and you say, Yaar, ye shaitan ne kar diya. You know, shaitan becomes like a big joint, monster. But when you say, Alhamdulillah, sab Allah ki taraf se, it's all from Allah. Shaitan becomes like a, smaller than the fly. Ke yaar, meri to koi value nahi iske samne. He does not count me anything. So this is how we have to understand. So once we start reading the Quran, we must ask Allah's protection. And all the, uh, calamities and hardship in the life. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Bismillah means with the name of Allah. Ar-Rahman, the most gracious. Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. Qul, say. Now, when, whenever you hear this word, Qul, it means that Allah is asking you or Allah is asking Muhammad sallallahu to convey to you so when it is from Rasulullah he is conveying to us. And if it is you to say to somebody, then you are conveying to others. So this is the meaning of the word Qul. Allah is saying, say, kaho. So 
according to the tafsir of Abdullah bin Abbas, whenever Allah is asking you to say something, that means it can be a dua. Means you are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this surah, Qula Udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq and Qula Udhu Bi Rabbil Nas, they too are duas. Duas means Allah se madad mangna. Against what? That you will know in from the text of the surah. Qul, say, A'udhu, I ask, I seek, refuge, Bi Rabbil Falaq, with the Lord. Rabb means Allah, Lord. Falaq means the dawn. It is like, you know, the breaking of the day. Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil of what he has created. Wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. And from the evil of ghasiq when waqab. Ghasiq is referring to the dark and it refers to the night. And waqab it refers to the covering. So the day is uncovered when you see it's lightened. When you see it becoming dark, that means the night is covering it. So that is the meaning that I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the daybreak. I seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that is created at that time, the dark time. And I seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the night, the darkness, when it is covering the day. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And I seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil. شَرْ means evil. And نَفَّاثَات جَادُ غَرْنِيَا The witches. نَفَّاثَات are those magicians who are female magicians and they نَفَّاث نَفَّاث is the wind that comes with the uh, spit of yours, spit. This is called nafat. And it refers to that Allah, I seek your refuge, I ask your protection from those female magicians who are blowing into nafathat fil uqat in the knots. Knots, the dhago mein jo ghaante baandhi jati hai. They have strings, they have got hair, they have got anything, and they tie the knots into it and they blow some magic spell. And this is specially referring to the magicians, which are female magicians. They tie the knots, they blow the magic spell on it. So we are asked to ask Allah's protections against these women. And I ask Allah's protection from the evil of the hasid, the person who has got envy when he envies and when he shows his jealousy to us. Wa alaikum as Notes lene bhai. Notes lene aage se. Okay, we, re- we take the re- translation quickly. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of Falaq from the evil of what he has created and from the evil of the ghasiq when waqab and from the evil of the blowers in knots and from the evil of the envier when he envies. Okay, then we go to the translation of Surah An-Nas. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. Qul, say, A'udhu, I seek refuge, bi Rabbin Nas, with the Lord of the Nas. Nas means people. People. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of An-Nas, the king of Annas, the god of Annas. These are the three qualities of Allah Lord, King, and God. Rab, Malik, and Ilah. From the evil of the whisperer who withdraws, who whispers in the breasts of Annas, of Jinn and Annas. Now we go to the tafsir of it. It says, the tafsir of Mawa'idatain, surahs uh, Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas. I have brought you the tafsir from the most classical book existing on the earth, accepted by all Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, all the scholars of four sects, four madhabs, they read them, this tafsir, even the Ahl Hadith, Salafis, everybody, 
Even Shias, they sometimes quote from this. So Tafsir ibn Kathir is the most authentic and classic and close to the correct understanding of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So what I have done, I have summarized that and brought only those issues from that Tafsir that is related to us. I have removed all the scholarly argument which Imam Ibn Kathir is uh, putting into that at uh, the time when he was preparing it, <coughs> what the time he was writing because there were people who were against so many things. So Imam Ibn Kathir used to prepare this tafsir in a way to refute them. So those scholarly argument which we don't need, we need the understanding of the tafsir of the Quran. So we, I brought that summary, summary to you. Am I clear? Okay. So these two surahs, uh, they are called chapters in English and we call it normally surahs. And in total, there are 114 surahs in the Quran and or you can say 114 chapters. So this is 113 which is Surah Al-Falaq and 114 which is Surah Al-Nas. Surah Al-Falaq has got five verses and Surah Al-Nas has got six verses. And they both are revealed in Medina. Some scholars, they said it was revealed in Makkah. No. The correct view is that it was revealed in Medina. Now, why we say Medina and Makkah? It is also a very important point for you to know. The portion that was revealed of the Quran before Prophet ﷺ migrated from Makkah to Medina, all that portion is called Makki. And all that which was revealed till the last breath of Rasul after the migration, that is called Madani. So these two surahs, because Rasul was never affected with the black magic in Makkah, or in Makkah, he was affected in Medina, which I will give you the reference to that. So definitely these two surahs were revealed for his remedy. So this surah has to be from Medina. Am I clear? Is my English clear to you? Yes. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, I bring Urdu statements, sometimes Arabic, so cocktail bolte. So if it is not clear, you can put the question, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Then let's understand uh, Surah Al Falak and Surah Al Nas briefly. Surah Al Falak text is titled Al Falak, meaning the rising dawn, or as I said, the breaking of the day. When the, the night is gone and you see that, you know, the suraj nikalne lag raha hai, thodi thodi safedi aari hai, white thing, the day is breaking. At that time, that dawn time is known as falak. And it is, the surah is named because that name is there, in, that word is there in the surah itself. Ul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. So based on that, the name has come from the word appearing in the first ayah. The subject matter of this surah covers the prayer of a believer for his or her protection from all possible external evils. So Surah Al-Falaq is external evil, evils that can come and attack you. So you, you ask Allah to protect you from that external. And as I said, what is external? The witches, the magicians. The, the person who will do evil eye, person who will do hasad on you. So those external. And Surat Al-Nas will be huh? internal, which means Khannas is there, who will run into our veins. Khannas is the shaitan, is one of the jinns, evil jinn. He will go into our body and he will start, you know, creating evil things in our mind. So that is internal. So Surah Al-Nas is a protection, is a dua, surah which is a dua for anything that you have. Like suppose you sometimes doubt Islam. Sometimes you even doubt, yaar, marne ke baad kya hone wala? Sometimes you even doubt, you know, okay, when I'll go to Jannah, what will happen after that? It's a rubbish, these are all fake myths, like that. So that ex internal evil is from Khannas and Surah Al-Nas will protect you from that. And Surah Al-Falaq will protect you from external. So if you understand this and implement in your life properly, then you are automatically closing the doors of the Mulvi Sahib who are busy with Taviz. Automatically. Then you don't have to go to them. They need the treatment. 
So, so if you know these two surahs and practically apply in yourself, it's very simple. You'll know from this, inshallah, that if you apply it in your life, then alhamdulillah, you are saved and you're protected. Okay. It says, I'm in the second paragraph on page three. The believer is directed to seek protection with Allah from the effects of external evils and the evil of the devil, shaitan, and the evil of darkness, of despair, and the evil of all occult endeavors, and the evil of the prejudices, enemy. Yeah, it all, there are four types of evil, external evil that you can get the attack of. Number one is the uh, evil of shaitan. Number two, the darkness of despair. Number three, the occult of endeavors. And number four, of hasid, the one who is jealous of you. So all these are the external types of evil that you can get. And it's all with the help of shaitan. So if you read Surah Al-Falaq with this intention, Allah, I'm asking you for protection. Allah, I'm asking you protection. With this intention, if you read this Surah Al-Falaq, Whatever the jadu is done, how deep jadu is done, how far it has been done, how strong jadu is done, the magic is done, inshallah, the Surah Al Falaq will cure that. Number Surah Al Nas. It says, Surah Al Nas contains six ayat. It takes its title, An Nas, meaning mankind, from a recurring word appearing at the end of each ayah. The subject matter of this surah covers the prayer of believer for his protection, for his or her protection from all possible internal evils. The believer is directed to seek protection with Allah from the effects of the internal evils emanating from his or her own heart. The internal evil, uh, evils are personal temptations, erroneous notions, false values, and secret desires. These are all from, you know, when you get all the different ideas in your mind. And believe me, the depressions, stress, and all the psychological problems that you have, if you read Surah An-Nas and blow on to yourself, you will be cured from that. But your intention should be that you're asking Allah's protection through them. Alhamdulillah. Now this one, the the next part is the evidence of why these surahs were revealed. So I won't be reading each and every word of it, but I'll just give you the brief of it. That Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was affected with the black magic. And there was a hypocrite, a munafiq who came to Islam, but he was practicing magic in Medina. His name was uh, Labid ibn Asim. And he was a well-known magician who was working with the help of Jews. He was like an ally, friends to them. And, and he sent a slave girl, young girl, to the house of Prophet Sallallahu And Prophet Sallallahu when he combed his beard, there was a piece of hair stolen by this girl with the comb given to this magician. And he did the magic spell on that. With the help of those ladies, he made 11 knots on that particular hair and magic spell was done and it was buried in under the well, covered with the rock. And it was so effective, so strong that Rasul used to have short memory, loss of memory sometimes. He would have physical relationship with his wives, but he won't remember that. So that's the reason some of the scholars, they say, how can we accept him like this? We cannot accept this hadith in that sense. Otherwise, we have to believe that he might have made mistake even in narrating the verses of the Quran. But no, we know that he was in this status for more than a month. He was ill and he couldn't know what is happening to him. Being a prophet of Allah, being a messenger of Allah, he didn't know what happened to him. Today, people are, you know, saying, they say so many things, and you are saying, he knows everything, he's so such a knowledgeable person. No, even Prophet, being a messenger of Allah, he didn't know. Allah sent Jibreel after a month or a few days, 
Jibril alayhi salam with another angel, they came to him, they related, they narrated the whole incident to him. They told that your hair is buried there. Then Prophet asked Ali and his uh, other cousins to go to that particular well and bring out that hair from there. And these six, uh, five surah, for five verses of Surah Al-Falaq, six verses of Surah al Surat nas eleven verses, each verse was blown into each knot and the knot was untied, unknotted, and then, alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ recovered from it. Then, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala, she said that after revealing of these two surahs, Prophet ﷺ never did any other dua except these whenever he used to have any, you know, physical pain or physical suffering. So, mashallah, automatically you are closing the doors of Molvisa. Molvisa rozi ni milti. Molvisa bivi se naraz hogi. Molvisa bacha ra bhag gaya. Molvisa karobar na. No, nothing like that. If you are following these two surahs, all the, you know, the evil of external or internal will be cured, inshallah. Okay, now going back to the merits and virtues. Number one, I'm on page five, the where merits and virtues of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas are very significant chapters of the Quran. Uqba bin Amir recorded that the Messenger of Allah said, Do you not see that there have been ayat revealed to me tonight, the like of which has not been seen before? They are Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. So in this surah, uh, in this hadith, it is clear that these two surahs were the unique portion of the Quran which was not repeated in other verses of the Quran. So they were the unique surahs, very, very important and significant surahs of the uh, Quran. Next hadith. The other one are the references. Okay, when I say this hadith was recorded by Imam Ahmad Muslim, so these are found in the authentic classical books. So if you still want to know specifically, which volume, which page, which number of the hadith that I can help you out. But I deliberately did not put that effort here because it won't be, this is sufficient, alhamdulillah. And in UK, when you learn something from me, from the Quran or hadith, I, I'm not boasting, but you can, with full confidence, you can convey this to others. And if they want the evidences in Urdu, in English, in Arabic, you'll get it, inshallah. So don't worry about it. Reciting Surah Al-Falaq, reciting Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas before going to bed and uh, after waking up. Uqba bin Amir radiallahu an said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, O oh, Uqayb, recite these surahs whenever you go to bed, sleep and whenever you get up. So this is the practical aspect of it, that if you go to bed, you recite these and when you get up, inshallah, and you recite these two surahs, your problems are resolved. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas are used to seek refuge with Allah from every evil. Ibn Abbas, uh, Ibn Abis al-Juhani said that the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, O oh, Ibn Abis, shall I guide you to or inform you of the best thing that those who seek protection use for protection, you know, those, those who are taking the means of like Taviz and this, the best protection is this. He is guiding a Sahabi saying, you can take this as a mean. And he, rep he replied to that. He replied, of course, O Messenger of Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, say, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. These two surahs are the best protection. Allah Who says the best? Prophet ﷺ. So the best man is saying, these are the best protection. Alhamdulillah. Next is Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas can be recited and can be wiped over the body to get uh, relief from the illness. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said that whenever the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was suffering from an ailment, he would recite the Mawadatain. Mawadatain is the uh, title given to Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Over himself and blow over himself then if his pain becomes severe, Aisha said that she would recite the Mawadatain over him and take his hand and wipe it 
over himself seeking the blessing of those surahs. This hadith was recorded by Imam Bukhari, Imam Malik, Imam Bukhari and other scholars. Next page, last page. Surat Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas are used to seek refuge with Allah from every evil of the jinns and mankind. And mankind means the magicians. Okay, in our families, people do jadu, karte so many things they do. So this surah, this is the evidence that if you take this surah for the protection, inshallah you are cured. Abu Sayyid radiallahu an said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to seek protection against the evil eyes of the jinns and mankind. But when the Mu'awiyah uh, Mu'awiyatin were revealed, he used to he used them for protection and abandoned all else besides them. So this is again, as I said, that uh, Rasul when these surahs were revealed, he did not use any other verses for protection. Now, alhamdulillah, uh, from next time, the next class, you will have another few surahs which will be taught in the same way. Now briefly saying, you have any suggestion that could be improved in teaching method, then you can come with those suggestions. Or if you're happy with this way, Alhamdulillah, uh, we can continue in, the, in future the same way. And if you have got any other questions, because I've got only 10 more minutes with you, I've got a TV program live, which is 793 MATV. So you can put your questions there now, inshallah. And the program will start at 10 o'clock, so I have to reach there at 10. It's in the Konsi Jagai, Wembley. Yeah, Wembley. So inshallah, if you have any other questions, I've got 10 minutes with you. How do you like it? You want me to continue the same way? Or you have got any other suggestions? Better suggestions? I'm always there to learn. Alhamdulillah. I will never say I'm perfect. So Alhamdulillah, I need your feedback in this. If you have got any other questions, then you can please let me know. Bismillah. Oh, 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 oh,